Hi there! Welcome to episode 2 of the Existential Ramble podcast. It seems I uploaded everything and this is a this is a go. So uh, thank you for being here. And um, yeah, I just had a giant itch in my butt to make this uh, podcast and I have a topic that I need to get off my chest. I don't know what the heck is happening. Like there's a lot of energy at work right now and I'm being like... Like, I'm busy with stuff I want to do, and um, I'm getting, like, pulled out of it, like, distracted and nudged. I don't know by what, (laughs) but um, I'm getting nudged to, um, I don't know, do something. And I I, I think it's this, but I'm not sure, so I'm doing this in case. Um, I might add a bit of an audio extract uh, of a personal voice note I made to myself a little while ago. Um, I was struggling with something pretty severe, at least for me, and it basically involved, I suppose the best way to put it is loneliness and I suppose distancing from people as you heal or you change. And how to handle that? Because it's complex as crap, let me tell you. And I suppose if I added the extract, great. If not, I don't know why I didn't. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give a bit of a paraphrase summary regardless. Um, basically, it was extremely painful, right? So I knew that while I was going to heal, I would distance and people might distance because I'm distancing from a version of myself that aligned with them and I suppose the reason I distanced initially and this was with a very dear friend I'm pretty sure they know I'm talking about them but also multiple people in my life so many dear people in my life family and other friends as well this started happening and this was a pattern with my previous relationship as well, and, and previous relationships, I, I would grow, I would outgrow a version of myself, or I would grow away from that version that connected to that person, right? That related to that person is a better way to phrase it. And it would be extremely painful for me because subconsciously I would start expecting them to, to heal, to change with me. And when they didn't, I started pressuring them to, and I started expecting it from them. And I ended up starting to, like, really disappoint myself. Um, I don't know where my head was at, and it's still, I don't know what where my head's at now. <laughs> Dude, send help. I'm going to take some water, but um, basically, I would grow resentful towards this person and I would blame them like depending on how far into my past we go like recently I wouldn't blame the person I'd recognize I was disappointing myself but deeper into my past uh, you'd I'd find instances where I blamed the person more and I, I wouldn't recognize that I was there was my expectation that was disappointing me not that person and then I would end up distancing from them and eventually like I cut these people out in the past, right? In my deep, deeper past. When I felt like they were bad for my circle, especially after my most recent breakup, I would like be extremely delicate with what I allowed around me. And if something was bad for me, I just cut it out. There was no lowering the pedestal or compromising or, or distancing a little bit or changing the status of the friendship but not cutting out the friend. There was no negotiating with me. It was either you were good for me or you were bad for me. If you were bad for me, I would cut you out. If you were good for me, great. You're safe. <laughs> and that, I think, made things very complicated. Even though it was very black and white for me, it made things really harsh because I would resent this friend and this loved one, this this person. I would resent them for not changing with me. And I would feel extremely frustrated because the, the pattern continued. And, you know, the people I cared about most fell into this pattern. And I kept wondering, hey, 
I feel like the universe is trying to tell me something. What? Why is this repeating? This is ridiculous. Why is it repeating? And I kept getting so frustrated and I kept handling it and, and becoming, I suppose, more mindful in the way I was handling it. And if you hear any scuffling in the background, it's my kitty. <laughs> but I just, I became more mindful of handling it. And I, I know in uh, one of the monks I, I listened to, he mentions, or no, yeah, he, he trained as a monk, um, mentions that it's okay to repeat negative patterns. Um, when you do it unconsciously, it's when it reinforces. But when you start doing it mindfully and, and consciously, that's when it starts to untangle and you start getting ready to to let that go. Regardless, um, I was becoming more mindful of, of this pattern and I wasn't happy with it because it kept repeating and I I kept needing to cut out people who were really important to me because I felt it was necessary. And yeah, I'm sharing all of my experience, by the way, uh, as again, some, I guess, what I'm learning right now, as Jennifer Hale calls it, road rash. And uh, I'm very young, right? I'm uh, 22 right now, so... I'm very young, very tiny still, so much to learn, and I'm literally just sharing along the way. As I said in my episode two, I maintain the right to change my opinion as things go go along. Um, But I just felt it worth providing an update, because I feel like it needs to be said. And I don't know how many other people talk about this, but I felt like I needed to. I'm justifying it for no reason. There you go. (laughs) Hmm. Regardless, um, short story long, (laughs) things sucked and I reached a point where I, I, I was busy distancing from people who I felt like I shouldn't be distancing from. Um, and I don't know. I don't know exactly how it untangled itself, but it started untangling and I started um, opening my mind to signs from the universe, right? Uh, we're all energy and I was I was aligning my energy in a way where I was like, listen, I'm ready to learn this lesson. Please, 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 please guide me. You know, whatever the heck is out there, whatever sees more than I do right now, as I see more than the ant sees that's walking on the grass tell me what the heck you know give me a bone and man did I get some bones (laughs) I got some bones a little bit of meats you know some spice in there it was it was great I I was covered let me tell you um (laughs) I basically uh, on my Instagram I use my Instagram purely to follow mentors right so I don't do anything social media related but I got so many of my mentors like posting videos and tips about um that were really really relevant to my situation and at the very least I was hearing it in a way where it was really relevant so I chose to hear it in a way in that regard if if you know that aligns more with the belief system but to me I felt like these were excellent. They were so applicable, dude. So basically, as I said, short story long, I think I'm at a point where I know what the heck I was doing wrong and I I know what the heck I can do to make it right. It's just about application now. I also feel like I'm at a point where I can, I, I have the best chance of applying it right, right now. I don't think I was able to receive this information in the past, and that's probably why I received it now. But among many things, I, I, I learned that number one, it is not your response. This is from Lori Wheeler. This is it's not your responsibility to change, or or it, it's it's not the <coughs> it's not anyone else's responsibility to change with you. You are allowed to feel in pain that you have outgrown a version of yourself that connected and related to this person. But be very careful not to fall into victim mentality, which I heard a lot, but I I think I only came to know what the heck that meant, what victim mentality meant. Where your attention goes is what manifests, right? So I would be on like a hangout with like two of the closest people in my life and... Like, 
right now I'm a lot more, uh, I suppose, focused on my mental health and, and development than they are, right? So everyone has their own issues and right now they have other things that they are focusing on, not in the place to really receive uh, or, or work on the same things I'm working on, right? Not in the space. That's perfectly fine. But the thing was that when I was sharing with them, I struggled to feel celebrated, right? So I would share things like what I'm sharing here and they would respond very poorly, almost disappointingly because I, w- I expect them to engage with me because I engage with them and then they wouldn't. And I got so angry because like, that's so unbalanced, bro. <laughs> what the heck? You know, you talk about this stuff that has no relevance to me, but somehow I find a way to find it interesting because I learn from you and I'm at, at this space where whatever anyone tells me is important to me, but yet I share something important to you or, or w- to me with you and you're just like, oh, cool. Anyway, and I'm like, oh, dude, <clears throat> what the heck, dude? Um, turns out, um, <laughs> it's okay if they don't do that. And when they did that, I would enter victim mentality. Suddenly, I don't know, it's a trauma response, it's, it's a reptilian brain and poor inner child being scared and wanting, desperately wanting to be loved, um, responding very quickly in a way where suddenly my focus is on, oh, I can find no one to relate to, no one gets me. Socially, my life is in shambles. My social life is chaotic. What the heck am I doing? I'm so alone. And my whole life, most of my life, and I really, really, I want to wanna take a moment to celebrate and to acknowledge the people who were there. And especially recently, you started being there a lot more as well. But I, and, I don't want to say but, because that kind of destroys what I just said. And in the past, unfortunately, I got in my head a lot. And as a teenager... I did not have a lot of support. In episode two, I admitted to literally using my teddies as friends, okay? So literally, I've, <laughs> I've had some struggles, bro. Um, so I've got a lot of issues with loneliness. And I get in my head a lot. And I, I got in my head a lot with my relationships as well as a result of that. And yeah, when my friends didn't respond the way I expected them to, I would rehash the entire freaking episode that I did my entire life the same stuff would repeat the same attention stuff and I just realized that and here's when the where the where the the signs come came in and me starting to realize oh this is why it's okay it's okay for my friends that I care about to not be in the same space as I am and to not be in the space to necessarily be able to find the value in what I value or to celebrate what I celebrate. Number one, I can deduce, and I've spoken to one of my close people, um, that many times they're not even in a space to acknowledge themselves or to celebrate themselves and to engage with themselves. So how could they take the energy to do that for me? You know, they're learning how to do that for themselves let alone people. So their lack of reaction was a comment on them, not on me or the value I brought to the friendship, right? And it was also not a comment, importantly, on their care about me. Because I kept wondering, you know, if if you cared about me, you'd make a point to remember to to engage with this thing I asked you to engage with, you know? Like, I'd want these people to listen to these podcast, uh, podcasts. And they don't get around to it. And I'd be like, hey, I guess you don't care about me because you're not bothering to remind yourself to do this. And I mean, I have, I had significant memory issues in my past, medically recognized as part of a dissociative identity disorder system. That is dissociative. It's a memory loss disorder. And I could make time for people. And I kept comparing my way of behaving to their, and my, uh, their way, and, and my love language to their love language. You know, if I couldn't make time to remember something that's important to someone, I didn't care about them as much. So if my friends don't make time for, you know, to remember what I care about, then they don't care about me. Makes sense, right? Except no, people don't speak the same love languages. And if they don't speak the love language I need, that's okay. 
um, there were a lot of maladaptive thoughts, uh, thoughts that, you know, were wrongly wired, that didn't make sense, but it makes sense when you're triggered or in a distressed state. Um, but why it's okay is because if the friendship feels unbalanced and like I'm over-functioning for them and I'm not receiving what I need from my circle and I feel like I am ex exhausting too much energy to meet them where they're at, I can just rebalance it. If they used to be on a really high pedestal in my life, I could just drop it a notch. I don't need to freaking throw them, like punch them straight off of the freaking pedestal and say, get the fuck out of my life, you never meant anything to me. That I don't need to do that. <laughs> you know, that's, no, I don't need to do that. I could just say, okay, we used to be really connected and now we can be a little less connected, but still connected, you know? Or we can still be really connected, just not supremely connected. Um, just balancing the energy a little bit better, you know? Um, it's really so much simpler than my brain made it. And, you know, maybe the best way to function in these relationships with these people you care about and to give them the space they need and to not resent them is to just meet them where they're at when you feel like you're not self-sacrificing by doing so. I don't find it hard to be interested in the things they like. So I wouldn't find it hard to participate and hang out with them in a context that they like. You know, one of my friends really loves museums. And I wouldn't find it over-functioning to join them to this visit to the museum. I wouldn't. But I know that they might find it over-functioning to join me at an anthropology center or a center where a, p a place of power or a science fair or something, you know. They might find it exhausting to do that. So I'm not going to make them do that because their their behavior there is going to disappoint me. Um, so it's just about meeting these people where they're at as well. Um, because most of the time I find with these relationships is they function really well on multiple aspects. But then there are a few key aspects that trigger the crap out of me. And if I can cut out the triggering aspects and appreciate the functioning aspects, then you know, that feels more reliable and it feels like something I can freaking do because I care about this person and I'm not in a space where I want to cut them out. It would hurt more than it would benefit. I care about them. They support me, you know. They are there when I need someone and they're there to provide a fresh uh, perspective and they're there to, to connect and bond with. It's just about limiting exactly what they bond with you know, and it's about finding the tribe where you don't need to go anywhere to meet someone, it's kind of a, you're both in a similar space, so no one needs to go meet the other person where they're at, if that makes sense. Um, I also learned, yeah, a lot about the victim mentality, that a lot of times, and most recently, I've been focusing a lot on people, and because I'm, I, I do have a past with trauma, um, it's, it's very easy to start predicting what people's next behaviors would be as a defense mechanism. Even if it's just in a daily context, you know? It's, it's not even in a stress context where I'm in danger. It's just a general behavior. Um, so it's, it's taking extra mindfulness to keep my attention at me. And not in, maybe in a selfish way, but in a healthy selfish way, right? You're not going to go out of your way to screw someone over, of course. And you're not going to go out of your way to not help them either or to support them either. It's just about when you worry about what that person thinks of you, you need to just bring it back to what do I think of me? When you want to obsess over the celebrity and hyperfixate about someone you, you can't meet or be, okay, what traits in them do I want to see in myself? When you start wondering, oh, who loves me? Does anyone even love me? Bring it back. I love me. It's all about just bringing it back to me. And the thing with, with those expectations from my friends was, and that, that victim mentality, was it drew me straight back into focusing on what people think and focusing on what people do for me and not what I do for me and, and what people don't need to do for me. And some other things... I just want to take some water and just ponder for a little second. 
done pondering. <laughs> it came to me the moment I just chilled my mind a little bit. I recently had to swallow a really tough pill. And there's only been one instance where I've had to swallow a tough pill. And that was when I got called out for obsessing over someone who was well known. I thought I was done hyper fixating and obsessing over quote unquote celebrities, right? I, I, I really always disdained that behavior in myself because it put my life on hold and it, it completely consumed me to, to be in love with this person and everything I was doing was in honor of them and it just, it, it really disrupted my life a lot. So I really despised that behavior within myself. I don't know if others experience it the same way, so I'm not going to speak on that level. But while I was growing, I got confronted and called out for having that same behavior towards one of my mentors. And I was like, no, guys, you're misunderstanding. No, that's not what's happening. It's just, it's literally just, no, it's, no, it's a vibe. It's an inner, oh my goodness. But turns out, no, no, I was hyper fixating. I was, I was um, putting a person on a pedestal and wishing for them to do things as a, as a, a way to not do them myself. Somewhere to point my energy. That was my kitty. I don't know if you heard her. She's just scuffling. Um, somewhere to point my energy. It turns out. As soon as I learned to point that energy towards myself, some stuff happened. It was weird. So another hard pill I needed to swallow literally, I think, a day or two ago. I'm not an extremely judgmental person. A negative judgment, specifically. I don't think I overtly hurt people or make them feel that way. However, I had to confront and accept the fact that I was negatively judging those around me and not in a good way in a way where even though I was I was speaking from a place of of love and compassion or at least I thought I was it would come across as condescending it would come across as exactly what I felt which was life there's one right way to do life and if you don't do it that way you're wrong turns out no Number one. And number two, it was hard to accept that I was throwing in subtle little body language, little little tidbits that um, I suppose (laughs) hurt those that I loved and subconsciously heavily affected their energy and their beliefs about themselves. About themselves. So that was difficult to come to terms with, right? And I narrowed that down to judging how they should be behaving, right? If you eat refined sugars, and just because I don't eat refined sugars, you know, you're doing life wrong. And I I, I did it in a very generous, gentle way that I would disapprove. But it was so out of place to disapprove. I was, that was not my place. And it was inappropriate. And it's not fair. It's not how I want to function. I don't want to function from a place of disapproval. I want to function from a place of acceptance and love and patience and understanding and relatedness so that I can truly embrace what I feel to be my soul. So realizing that I was doing this made made me feel not great because it felt like I was sort of beginning again at Step one, which was superiority issues. (laughs) Bro, what the heck do you mean, you know? Uh, If you didn't uh, listen to episode one, did I say episode two earlier? I meant episode one. That's funny. Uh, Anyway, um, yeah, so go, if you didn't listen to episode one, I I speak a bit about my, my, my growth arc when it came to superiority issues, then inferiority, and now trying to balance self-love and healthy self-love. Um, so my judgment came primarily from expecting people to behave in specific ways and then being disappointed and disapproving what they should be doing. And I hear often from my mentors um, that are all listed in the description, by the way, um, if I mention anyone relevant to the to the podcast specifically, I'll I'll put them at the top. 
but you'll find everyone I follow on, on Instagram and I'm learning all of this from in the description. So if you want any resources or you are open to receiving more teachers and, and mentors and you want to become part of a community that or form your own little mind community where you can follow people with with positive vibes and and amazing life advice they're all there so that's kind of where a lot of my information is founded on so yeah what I was hearing a lot from my mentors was that what you see in others and what you judge in others is a reflection of yourself you are projecting usually it's a literal side-by-side mirror of what the heck you don't like within yourself and what you expect from yourself. So when I realized that I was shooting other people, <laughs> should-ing, meaning they should be doing this, I got brought back to the fact that I was shooting myself. I was making myself feel guilty and ashamed when I wasn't behaving the way I should be behaving, right? Oh, you're down again today. No. Oh, you're distracted again today. Why aren't you meditating? You know, you should be meditating. You you should be being more productive. You should be doing this thing. And I do that with myself a lot, or at least I have been doing that, had in the past. Um, language is really important to me specifically, and I, I do think it's, it's it'll benefit others for it to be important to them as well. Um, a lot of times when you manifest and when you want to change behaviors, it's important to speak in the present as though those behaviors are already present. When you speak in a way where you're still struggling with them, um, that is part of manifesting them for that moment. You kind of put the change on the back burner for the future. When you speak, your brain eventually aligns with that. And where you focus your thoughts and your language your brain will align. And that's only my belief and my belief system. If you have, you want to share about your belief system, please do speak with me in the comments. I, I really would love to hear it. Um, but yeah, that was pretty cool to be able to hold up that mirror and be like, oh, I am pressuring the crap out of myself to behave in my ideal way. No wonder I'm pressuring my friends to do it too. <laughs> so... That's something I just, I guess the biggest takeaway of that podcast or this podcast is just take note of what you see in other people and what you judge in other people, specifically negatively judge. Because this has been so helpful for me because I was able to narrow down how to do it. I would not magically stop judging others or shooting (laughs) good gosh am I going to be demonetized I don't know exactly how the rules work here (laughs) I was not going to magically stop expecting other people to behave the way I wanted them to but what I could work on as a foundational step was stopping myself from pressuring myself to behave in the way that I wanted myself to behave in I could start with that Because the moment I started loving myself, I started loving people. The moment I started being more kind to myself concerning mistakes and failures, the more kind I became to people about those things. So the more I can come to a place where I stop judging myself, pressuring myself, and expecting myself, and and I should be doing this and I should be doing that, ideally, if, you know, my past and patterns are correct, that'll translate to people. So I know most of this podcast was primarily some backstory and a uh, conflict I was dealing with, but I felt worth it worth mentioning. Sometimes sharing a story like that, if you're in the right space to, to extract information from it, can be really valuable, you know? I'm part of a really beautiful community. Um, it's called The Haven. By, uh, it's, it's hosted by Jennifer Hale on her Patreon. And water sip, stay hydrated. I would invite anyone that uh, or anyone interested in self growth to to join that community. It's not really a community to freak out 
about all of her work and her fantastic, um, you know, portrayals in, in games and characters and things like that. It's not a space for that. Um, it is uh, promoted as a space to freely speak about anything. Life. It's life advice, right? And there are monthly streams where we have a live talk all to each other, or rather all to Jennifer, uh, each have a turn. And I learned a lot of what I know through those streams, just by listening to other people's stories and then listening to the wisdom that comes out of that and Jennifer's response to it and the person sharing's response to it. Like, there's a lot of wisdom in stories. So I do trust that this podcast lands well and that it's still beneficial to you. Um, I want to get myself to a space where I can serve more. As water serves, as food serves, as... I don't know. I just want to be able to serve myself and people more efficiently. And, of course, it it would be beneficial if it's beneficial. I don't know what the heck, semantically null sentence there. I don't know, just... <laughs> um, yeah, thank you for listening. It's like 1am and... Maybe this is the reason I got I had heightened energy. However, I will keep you updated on if the situation changes or anything like that. This is primarily a sharing of wisdom, general thoughts, and of course, my healing slash growth journey. And I think it's pretty cool because, you know, you see a lot of uh, fitness journeys and situations where people track their uh, weight loss and things like that. But I feel like there's not a lot of uh, documentation about mental healing, people tracking their psychological healing or their psychological change. So I think this would be great to reflect back on and be able to see, oh, cool. So a lot of the channel might be situations where I present an issue I was facing and then also the solution that I found. Uh, And ideally, the solution will be very beneficial and helpful to you. And do let me know whatever you think of this. Uh, If you disagree with something I said or the way I handled something, please let me know. Um, I'm always looking to grow. And I know we all have blind spots. And I'm not blind to my ability to have blind spots. So that's great. Yeah. (laughs) So, yeah. Anyway, thank you for listening to my podcast. (laughs) Thank you for listening. And uh, take care of yourselves. Stay hydrated and I'll see you in the next one.